when there was none. Now it's telling us there are 24, the police are saying 19. We will, we will find out where the numbers are. Okay. But that is the credibility of the organization okay, okay. Ms. that you are telling. Mr. President, that, that may let, well be. Let, let, me, let me also... You, you may, my, my just question, on Mr. that issue on the death so that Eric can follow up. The people you who may, died... Yeah, that's where I'm coming. Why are they a danger that, that's to the where, police? That's where I'm coming. Are they the criminals that you're talking about? Let me tell you two things. There will be an investigation on how these 19 Kenyans died. There will be a clarity, an explanation for each and every one of them. I have told you one situation where somebody accosted the police, took over the firearm, started to shoot at people, endangering the lives of many other Kenyans. He was shot by the police. There is a situation in parliament. How did the invaders in parliament, they invaded parliament and went straight for the armory at the Moselia. They went straight at the armory at the Sergeant at Arms office. Those are the investigations that we will get into and a proper explanation will be given to the country. Our Mr. weapons Mr. lost? What I am saying... Are the weapons, are the, are the armories and the mausoleum and inside parliament, that, that, are they that is as why, missing? That is why there will be an investigation Mr. of how these armories were attacked. And they, how did these people know that there was an armory in parliament? Mr. President, you may, you may not believe the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, but surely you would believe your own deputy who has said there's been a return to extrajudicial killings and abductions contrary to what you and him promised the people of Kenya. Let me tell you, I am the president and I speak for the government of Kenya, right? I made three commitments that I will make sure the police is independent. And I did that on my first day in office. Number two, I said there will be no extrajudicial killing in Kenya. I have kept my, my, my promise. Number three, I have told you that if there is any arrest by the police, that does not amount to an abduction, in my very honest uh, Let's pause for a moment, uh, Mr. President. And I just want us to go to that video over there which will play on air and uh, let's post and watch it together your excellency let's watch this video sell them to the people of kenya there are enough intelligent people in kenya to differentiate what is good from what is better and what is best some time? We we are are and why let their but these people don't understand the damage they are doing to the people and the economy of Kenya. All right. All right. Yeah, yes, the, vi the video in uh, contention here is, was recorded earlier today. Yes. That of former MP Alfred Keter being abducted in broad daylight. Mr. President, before you even talk about the entire incident, the children were screaming and the sound that we believe belongs to the wife was also heard screaming in distress how does that make you feel three things i have told you i made a deliberate decision to make sure that the police operate independently that's number one number two I have told you, if the police summon Linus Kaikai, Kai, and Linus Kaikai Kai refuses to go to the police, are the police not entitled to come and look for you? When the police come to arrest you after they have summoned you and you didn't show up, is that an abduction? So let's have this as a confirmation. That no, I'm just MP, asking you. Let's have this as a confirmation, Your Excellency, that Alfred Keter was summoned by police. He refused to uh, the police respond have to issued the summons. a statement. I, I would suggest, instead of uh, us having a back and forth, the police have released a statement. Can you check what the police, the police have released, the statement? 
And you still has not answered my question. Which the wife and children screaming that way. I mean, how do you feel, Your, your Excellency? I mean, my friend, every child, every mother feels the same when their parent is under attack. I mean, th the, that, is, it, that, that is what it is. But let me ask you, what about the children? What about the children of those who have lost their lives because of the criminality of others? Don't they feel the same? So we, we just need to be a country of the rule of law. Impunity cuts both ways. Those who respect the law must be protected by the law. Those who do not respect the law must face the full force of the law. That, that's how it operates. That's how we will have a society. Here is the impression. same way yeah. we must condemn excessive use of police powers, Here but we must equally deal firmly and decisively with criminals who put the lives of other Kenyans in danger destroy property of hard-earned earnings. There are many people, Linus, in this, in this demonstration that have lost livelihoods, that today their children are crying. Today their wives are in tears because they don't know how to face tomorrow. Mr. President, do their businesses have been wiped out. Yeah. Their incomes have been destroyed. But I have just told you 2.4 billion shillings worth I, of I business you, has been destroyed. You, and today, as I talk to you this evening, there are families who have tears. There are families who do not know how to face tomorrow. And, and, and I have asked you very specifically, President, how do you feel about those tears, especially I mean, it, those it, who it's, have been it's, killed it's horrible. by police bullets? It is horrible. It is horrible. When you find a situation where people are grieving, whether they are grieving because their parents have been arrested, or they are grieving because they are hard earned earnings of many years. Money is there, I have, I have on my phone. People who are saying, I borrowed money. My whole loan has been wiped out. My whole barber shop has been destroyed. My whole hardware has been looted and burnt. And they are in tears. So I must equally work with the police to protect all these citizens. And it, and, it, and it cuts both ways, uh, Linus. It you, cuts both ways. Using the rule of law. Absolutely. Let me take you to just step by Absolutely. step. Absolutely. The rule of the law. The rule of law says. Mm -hmm. The rule of law requires the police to investigate a matter to when they have sufficient evidence, present that to the ODPP. The director of public prosecutions takes people who are culpable to court. That's the journey in the rule of law, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. In the case of 39 people who have been abducted, and the abduction here, we're using it deliberately because of the manner in which the people have been arrested, like we've seen in the case of Alfred Kater, others who've been picked up from their houses in the middle of the night, and they are held in communicado for more than 24 hours outside of what the, the rule of law says. And then they are not taken to court so they are not charged with anything. That is outside of the rule of law. So in one instance here we are saying we are not following the rule of law. In the second instance, Mr. President, you have people who were unarmed, like in the case of Rex, who was shot in the middle of the night, unarmed, who have been shot by police and they've ended up dead. 24 of them, you say 19. That again, is extrajudicial because there is no justification that has been produced to show that there was justification for the police to use the excessive force. So basically we are showing examples where the rule of law which you promised to uphold, which you also set and said this is what the police has been doing. And you said, Mr. President, um, as, as you took office, that the problems with the police service also are going to the top, the leadership of the police service. And you promised the people of Kenya that you're going to hold the police to account outside of the rule of law 
and accountability which comes to your desk. Are you holding the police accountable for 39 people abducted, for 24 people killed, for 627 people arrested and not charged, for 431 people injured by live bullets, rubber bullets, tear gas canisters, police batons? Uh, Latif, as I have told you, we must operate within the parameters of the rule of law. And I agree with you. The police must never act outside the framework of the rule of law. They must do that which only the Constitution and the law allows them to do. And it is very clear that any operation of the police outside the parameters of the law, the police will be held to account. Whether it is uh, holding citizens beyond the stipulated time, but I must be thoroughly clear to you, when police arrest somebody, there is a constitutional timeline which they are allowed by the law to hold that person. 24 hours. That does not amount to an abduction. 24 hours. In my, in my opinion. A case in point is what has just been said here about uh, what happened earlier today. And you guys clearly said in this uh, uh, conference that it was an abduction. I mean, it, it's just clear now that it is not an abduction. They are not this, 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 is, this, is, this, is, this is an arrest. And the police have come forward to say, this is the situation, we have arrested uh, this person, and it is, it is just good for us to all of us follow the law. And, and I agree with you, the police must act within the law. But let me ask you one question uh, also, Latif. I have never, in this conversation, which is now 20 minutes in, are you guys bothered about the fact that parliament was burnt? Are you guys concerned that millions of businesses of Kenyans, hardworking Kenyans, we, we are, were, were destroyed? How do you feel? But it all happened. Yeah, but How do you feel? It, and and it's all happened under your watch, Mr. President. No, but that, this, this is at the end of the day, saying, this is why we are saying you sort keep must, us safe. We must be even. You know, we must be even. The police have a difficult job. They have to make sure the peaceful demonstrators are protected. But they also must make sure that the criminals, and, I, and when you say criminals, you know, when I said the other day criminals, many people took offense that I was calling the demonstrators uh, criminals. That's the not... The families of the dead, your that, that is not, that, a lot of offense. Family of Rex. Rex was killed in a week when the protesters were very peaceful. <laughs> the first week of these protests were peaceful. We saw protesters carrying carrying uh, flakards and water bottles yes, water bottles my, my <laughs> rex was killed on his way out of work yeah, let me let me let me how do you feel you. i mean let me let me tell you when they hear let me, let say me. criminals i mean are you are you telling me rex is the one who broke uh, who burned parliament but rex died without breaking no, anything. no i'm just telling you he died you know, rex, there oh, are, died there are criminals yeah. who infiltrated and caused mayhem and in fact some of the criminals are actually harmed. They actually harmed the peaceful protesters. Many of the peaceful protesters, they lost phones. They were attacked. In fact, some of the uh, peaceful protesters were attacked by criminals, including a clear example of the one I have, I have, I have explained to you, that they overpowered the police, took the gun from the police, and started shooting innocent people. So we must deal with this situation globally. M Mr. President. I feel for Rex and the mother. This should not happen to any child in Kenya, especially when they are engaged in a peaceful demonstration. Mr. President, the, the concern I've heard from the young people, because I've been speaking to a lot of them, 
And they said they haven't heard you. In the two statements, actually, there are more now because you have spoken in other settings apart from the two addresses you gave. They haven't heard you address them. They haven't heard you talk to these parents. They haven't heard you acknowledge that there were people who were shot by police in circumstances that did not warrant that. Are you saying you haven't seen anything that bothers you about how police responded to these protests? I am very, and I have, and and in my first statement, I clearly said that innocent lives were lost. In my second statement, I said the same. There were innocent lives lost. But also equally, as a person who is responsible, I must think about those who are suffering because they were innocent, but I'm also, I must also be concerned about those who are suffering because criminals cause them immense harm. And, and that is the balance that I need to be able to lead a country. I must protect everybody. I must protect the protesters and I must be concerned about their lives. I must also uh, protect innocent people who become victims of criminals who take advantage of a peaceful democratic process that goes on in our do, do you feel that you protected all those people on, uh, in the last couple of days, whether it is people who have businesses, I did whether it is best. parliament, whether it is the people who lost their children? I did, I did my best. If I, if I hadn't done what I did, things would have been much worse. In fact, many people ask me, Mr. President, why did you call in the army? I mean, what choice did I have? I mean, it would have been very reckless of me in the face of the kind of harm people had gone through, the 2019 lives that were already lost, in the face of a burning uh, Chief Justice Office, um, Parliament, and, and the rest of it. I mean, it would have been very reckless of me not to mobilize every arm of government and every arm of our security agencies to protect the country and to protect lives. You acted as Commander-in-Chief. You also acted as President, Head of Government, and the person who took the sword and promised to protect the people of Kenya. You chair the National Security Council, which brings in the head of the police, the head of the intelligence, the head of the military, and cabinet secretaries in those dockets. Did you have information prior to Tuesday that there was going to be infiltration of the peaceful demonstrations by the criminal elements that you've talked about more than once. And if you did, what did you do about it? We had information, and that is why we prepared in the manner in which we did. If we hadn't prepared in the manner in which we did, we would not be counting 19. We would be counting different numbers. Okay. And I am telling you that the level of mobilization by criminals was heavy. In fact, many of the peaceful protesters, many of the young people, very well-meaning young people, left the town by 10, maybe 11, because they realized, and in fact, you could hear them in their, in their, in their, in their zelo. They were saying, guys, we are, this, this, is not our, this is not our group. Let, let us go, let us leave. You could hear them. It, it was in public domain that the peaceful demonstrators all of a sudden realized that the whole thing had metamorphosed into, into, into uh, criminality. So there were criminal and, elements that basically hijacked. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it is Sunday. Mr. President, how many people are in custody on account of this those who you said they conducted treasonous activities, there were criminal elements, they... Um, you will see them in court tomorrow. How many people are in custody? You will see them in court tomorrow. The police know what I, I, uh, I have a, you know, a, 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 a ballpark uh, brief by the police that they have enough people. They have actually, because in Kenya nowadays, you cannot commit crime and get away with it. Those who attacked parliament are on CCTV. Those who attacked the judiciary are on CCTV. Those who attacked everywhere, those who destroyed people's shops are on CCTV. 
Many of them are on the run, but we will catch them. Similarly, and Your Excellency. Are the funds Similarly, are the Your Excellency. In, in Similarly. So, so uh, to, to your question, mm. so the police are at it because if we don't deal with impunity, we, do, we will not have a country. Now, similarly, Your Excellency, you speak of them, protesters being on CCTV. Not the protesters, yeah. I'm saying the criminals who attacked parliament. Right. Now, every policeman also, without uniform, conducted an abduction, has also been captured on camera. Those who captured Shad Kiprono were captured on camera. Those who captured Alfred Keter today were captured on camera. And a number of other uh, such incidents. Similarly, so that uh, because I can hear you balancing. Yes, uh, that's correct. Yes, are we going to see action against the killer cops? Or were they doing what you are saying you had to do to prevent this from being bad? Any killer cop who went beyond what is provided for in the law, will, action will be taken against them. But to your question, are you telling me, Linus, that a police officer becomes only a police officer when they are in uniform? No. Police officers can identify themselves, even when they are in civilian. So, and, and, and when a police officer comes to you and says, this is my ID, I am police officer, you are under arrest for the following reasons, that, that, that is legitimate. Uh, you, you cannot uh, tell yes, me that you know, <laughs> because they were in civilian, then it, what they did was wrong. And you know that's not what they do. And that, that's not what they did to Alfred Keter or Shad Kiprono. Were you there? You have the, we have the CCTV footage. You, it's there for, it's, I, would, it's, I would suggest, uh, Linus, that we be fair to the police as well. Mr. 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 And I have given you my word. Any police officer who does anything beyond the provisions of the law know the consequences. Just as any citizen who also participates in actions that are outside the law, they also know the consequences. Uh, and it is our responsibility to make sure that security agencies act in accordance with the law. As our citizens, we act in accordance with the law so that we can have a law-abiding, rules-based, uh, rule of law-based country. As things stand now, Mr. President, are you satisfied with how the police handled this whole matter? I think the police have done the best they could. If there are any excesses, we have mechanisms to make sure that those excesses are dealt with. Let's wrap it this way, Your Excellency, on that topic. You have absolutely no regrets about the abductions and no regrets about the killings? Those are your words. Those are not mine. They're also your deputy's words. Put much, don't put words in my mouth. They're also your deputy's words, and he's part of your government, because it's so scary, Mr. President, mm. sitting there and telling the whole country that from this moment on, we should not believe what your deputy tells us about the state of the nation until you speak. Yet we all thought you know, that you're part of the uh, same government. Uh, don't, don't, don't inject my deputy into this conversation. I think it is not fair, since he's not here, to tell you in what context he said whatever he said. I think it is, it is not proper to discuss the deputy president here. And he's my deputy. Please let me deal. But have you asked him me, that you had a press let conference? Me deal with the issues as they are now. I think uh, being personal and, and going that direction does not help. I, I wish this was personal, Mr. President, but it's a really serious national issue that right after you spoke, your deputy told the whole world that he was informing us that extrajudicial killings and abductions had returned to this government that he's part of. How surely can that be personal, Mr. President? I am, I am sure that uh, if you interview the deputy president, he will answer that appropriately. You haven't you asked him? It, you can take it from me that extrajudicial killing will not be part of an administration that I run. I can say that without fear. Now, and uh, yes, in the interest of moving this conversation forward, Your Excellency, I want us to look into the last two extraordinary weeks that this country has had. Protests that you called tribalists and some of your uh, aides called leaderless. But protests that are led by 
young people who are unhappy with how you've run this country for the last uh, just under two years, two, two years now. But the question they have as you, they look at you and watch as you speak today, Your Excellency, do you get it? I get it. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, uh, my good uh, friend Linus. What we are facing today is not a product of two years. What we are facing today is a product of many years. We've had a problem, a youth bulge, a demographic challenge as a nation, which we have ignored for very long. For the first time, I have decided that I am going to be deliberate, I am going to be intentional on tackling the challenge of young people and unemployment in Kenya. First time, there is an administration that thinks about the young people. Let me give you three examples, maybe four. Well, let's keep it within the two weeks, please. No, no, it's yeah. okay. No, it's yeah. the two weeks. Yes. You know, but you know, don't look at the two weeks in isolation. The young people we have in the street did not happen in the last two weeks. They were not born when I became president. They were not jobless when I became, they, were not, they, they did not become jobless when I became president. But I want just these, to... These are young people who over the years, we have thousands, we have close to four and a half million young people who are out of school, out of college, with degrees, certificates, diplomas, without jobs. And that is why I have done four things. Number one, when I pushed the housing program, it was not about the houses. It was about the jobs. Today, as I talk to you, Linus, we have 160,000 young people working in different parts of Kenya under our housing program. In Mukuru, here in Nairobi, and I challenge you, Linus, to go there tomorrow, there are close to 4,000 young people working who are jobless. Number two, I have a whole program on digital jobs. I was in, I was in Ruru now, yes, with yes, the MP for, so, with, and just allow me. Allow me to interrupt no, you. No, allow because me. There are, there are risks on both ends of this interview. No, I, I'm just, I'm, you told me, it. you told I want me to, I want about Your Excellency the young people. talk about the last two weeks. And the young people are saying, you don't get it. You don't understand what they are talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the trigger here? They're saying there was this conversation about the finance bill that your government until the other day could not listen to anybody it's not about the housing project it's about listening they are saying yours is not a listening presidency and yours is not a listening government how how best can i listen to the young people of kenya if i am not addressing their issues and that is why i want to tell you linus these young people what is their biggest issue? They have talents. They have gone to school. They have no jobs. That is the problem. And I am addressing those, those issues. Housing is one of them. Digital jobs is another. I was in Ruiru with Simon Kingara, the MP for Ruiru, launching a, uh, an ICT hub that will hire, is actually hiring already for 5,000 young people. Our whole plan, including what was in the finance bill was to increase CDF by 10 billion shillings to roll out ICT hubs in every ward in the Republic of Kenya Mr. so that they, we can so hire young people, train them, put them on digital jobs. I have a third program the on export of labor. Mr. President, I have a fourth the program on manufacturing yes. to be able to create more opportunities for the young people of our country. And, and we president. want to inform you, they're no longer just talking about things that can be done to them as a demographic. They are looking at the big picture. Finance bill brought them out. And when did they come in? They came in after all public participation forums were not listened to. Kenya Association of Manufacturers spoke to the parliamentary committee, same thing, and said this is a bad bill. In, uh, Association of Insurance spoke to the, the, the parliamentary team, this is a bad bill.
Mm. We had a big conversation on national television. Mm. This is a bad bill. Mm. You did not listen. Mm. You had a meeting here with your UDA MPs and at some point told them to pass it as it is. And until the last week, that was the first Tuesday when the protests were there, when now you offered, um, you offered to uh, some amendments. They're saying you're just not listening and it's not about them, it's about the big picture issues and we'll come to them including the question of corruption which is not really a youth thing. <coughs> Indeed, Mr. And just to Dinos, add on to, just to, add on to that, you Mr. President, respectfully, have been more Mr. President, just, wrong I just want to come in. In your analysis. I just want to add on to that, Mr. Because, yeah. I want to add yeah. because, let me, let me just finish it. Nino. It's the same question. It's okay. the same question. Mr. President, if you went into all the tweet, the X spaces where the youth are speaking, if you looked at the demonstrations and what they were saying, the placards they are carrying, none of them has talked about we don't have jobs. None of them have talked about the housing jobs are not enough for us. None of them have talked anything about what you have mentioned. So it's not that they are not seeing about the jobs. It is beyond that, Mr. President, and respectfully I want to put it to you that you're not hearing what they're saying. In fact, they're let me, only heard after the protests, after all those things you described, that's the time that you let came me, and let say, me, I let have me, listened. Let me, let me tell you the following. The rejection of the finance bill, and this goes to what uh, Linus has said, that um, we didn't hear anything. Let me tell you, the process of a finance bill, in fact, you know, many people believe in Kenya, that the finance bill is an invention of William Ruto. It is not an invention of William Ruto. The finance bill is an instrument that has been with us ever since independence. Only that we have made it much more transparent. Only that we have brought out more to the public. And that is why there is greater interrogation of what government is doing, especially after the new constitution that made public participation, not a, 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 a sterile provision of the constitution, but public participation to be an integral part of lawmaking, an integral part of managing the country. Let me tell you, when we took the bill, when, when, it, when we uh, formulated the bill, it had 346 billion of new revenue. When MPs went out to the public, the public said, we don't think this is good. We don't think this is good. It was reduced by 140 something billion shillings. It remained just 200 billion. Doesn't that amount to listening? No, it doesn't. That, that the public said, reduce this by... No, it uh, doesn't, no. Mr. President. And that's yeah. why okay. I said reject it. It just wait, you just wait. No, we are talking about listening. Yeah. Let, just relax. We are talking about listening, okay? So the public said, reduce this by 146. We sat down, we cut down the areas, we reduced it to uh, 200. What went into the space was the people who wanted to mislead the public, to say, oh, you see, in fact, uh, everything you have been told is still there, this was not removed, these people are not listening, these people are not listening. And let me tell you, uh, my good friend uh, Latif, we have dropped the finance bill. Yeah? What does that mean? It means we have gone back almost two years. It means that this year we are going to borrow a trillion shillings to be able to run our government. That's what it means. I have been working very hard to pull Kenya out of a debt trap. Mr. President. Let, let, no, let me, just allow me. Because you know, we need to contextualize this finance bill. It is easy, uh, Joe. It is easy for us as a country to say, let us reject the finance bill. That's fine. And I have graciously said, we will, we will drop the finance bill but it has huge consequences. It means we will not confirm the JSS teachers, 46,000 of them. It means we cannot support our farmers with two billion shillings 
for us to make sure that farmers get a fair return of 50 shillings per kilogram, uh, per, per kilo of their milk. Mm -hmm. It means we cannot sort out the coffee debts. It means we cannot support the cherry fund. It means we cannot sort out the um, uh, debts of farmers in, in, uh, in, in, in Mumias. It also means that we will continue to import potatoes from Europe when we have potatoes in his village. You just told me you Mana. in Kimana. Mr. We have potatoes Mr. in Mr. Yandarwa. President, we have we uh, have onions all over the place. That may well be. I think the problem has been these are people who are saying they haven't been listened to. You only listen because you said on that night, on that Wednesday night, that is the moment you said that you had realized. Mr. President, that Kenyans did not want anything to do with that bill. And one would wonder, how can that be, Mr. President? And, and you have had all these presentations that have been made. Did it have to take demonstrations and sadly loss of lives for you to come to a point where you'd realize what your people, the people that voted for you, are saying? That, I think, is what the young people are asking. Let me tell you, uh, Joe. Members of Parliament are representatives of the people, elected. They are not fools and they are not mad. And I want to say, one day, Kenya will know that the MPs who voted yes are the true heroes of Kenya. Those are the people who saw the opportunity for us to unchain our country from debt trap and take our country to the future. Let me tell you, Joe, and I want to say this to the people of Kenya, that my plan was to make sure that in the next three years, maximum four years, we have a balanced budget, where Kenya is not the country where we are today. Let me uh, tell you, gentlemen, and I want to tell the people of Kenya the following. We are in a very difficult financial position. This is something that the people of Kenya must understand. And that is why I am happy that we have a crisis. This crisis will help us be candid and speak to each, to each other properly and contextualize where we are. We raised this year 2.3 trillion from our taxes. Of that, 2.3 trillion, 1.1 trillion went to debt financing. One trillion went to salaries. What did we do? We had to go and borrow to pay the counties. We had to go and borrow to fund our education. We had to go and borrow to fund. Now, the, the funding gap we have done with the finance bill going down is that instead of borrowing 600 billion, we are going to borrow 600 billion plus 346 billion, that is close to a trillion. And let me tell you, uh, my good friends, and I want us to be honest with ourselves, this is not how a country will get to a status where we are proud of our nation. This is not how we are going to this is not how we are going to grow. Uh, and that is why, and that is why, mm -hmm. Linus, this situation, this crisis is a very important inflection point that we can sit yeah. together, assess, let us agree. And I have, I have no problem. Let us agree. Yeah. Do we continue borrowing? Uh, and let me give you the statistics. Uh, when in 2013, Linus, just allow me one minute, please, with a lot of respect. Okay. In 2013, the debt stock of Kenya was 1.8 trillion. For 10 years, that increased five times to 11 trillion, 10 point something trillion. We built a lot of roads. We connected a lot of electricity. We did many things in 10 years, but we were doing it on debt. Today, we don't have the luxury to borrow because we have reached the limit. And today, yeah, let me finish. Okay. Today, all the money we borrowed from 2013 is maturing. That is why the biggest challenge that we have as a nation is that we are spending 
1.1 trillion every year of taxes we collect from ordinary Kenyans to pay debt and not the whole debt. That's interest. Interest. Alone. Yeah. interest you know? principle comes to 1.8 trillion this year. So, my good friends, and yet you want to tell me, William Ruto, don't collect domestic taxes. Go borrow more money. No, that, Mr. That's, President. That's not what they're saying, uh, that, uh, President. Uh, what, what, that, is, what, is, what is the alternative? Yeah, yeah, and I just wanted to come to one. No, what, thing. Is, what is the alternative? Just, yeah. just help me there. Yeah. Because there are, there are only two things you can do. Either you raise money from taxes or you borrow. Period. Yes. There, 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 there is no magic there, here. There are Kenyans, Your Excellency, right now who do not listen to all that. Yes. They are not interested in that. That's okay, but but that's the reality. Then, but, but I need if to you are not, in, if, you, if you do not want to listen uh, to hang reality. Your Excellency, hang, hang on, Your Excellency, because I need you to address a very important issue here. And that is one of a trust deficit. There are Kenyans who watch you, Your Excellency, and I don't know whether you are aware that they don't trust what you say. They don't believe what you say. Are you aware, Your Excellency, for example, that a lot of Kenyans increasingly don't associate the truth with you? That is your assessment because you have never associated the truth with me <laughs> from the beginning. No, no, there's, there's quite a number of no, Kenyans. No, I mean, that is, the, that, is, that is that is we your assessment. Asked, we asked people before we came that here. That is your assessment. Yeah. And many of those that responded to me directly mm. and to even our platforms on KTN News, on Spice FM, on NTV, on Citizen, and we're asking them, what question should we ask the president this evening? And the one thing that many of them were saying is, when will he stop lying? <laughs> so it's not Linus. That can he tell us the truth this let time? Me, yeah. Let me say the following. I told the people of Kenya that I would reduce the prices of fertilizer from 7,000 to 2,500. I don't know how that is a lie because they buy it at 2,500. Okay. You, you, I, told the, they are, I, I told the people of Kenya we are going to have, we're going to have a housing pro pro program. A housing program is underway in Kenya. I, I can tell you, Linus, that whether you believe me or not, facts will not change. Yeah, and facts uh, are not changed by who says it. And, and, and allow me facts to, allow me to facts. step back a bit, Your and Excellency. facts yeah. are very yes. stubborn. Allow me to step back a bit. Yes. And what I'll do is we'll play clips, just a little combination of clips of yourself speaking not too long ago, and I want us to listen to that. I'll stand out of the way because you said it's, it, it's me that doesn't share the truth with you. And I would like you to respond to yourself, to the clips that we are going to uh, play. But, but if, you see, uh, you it, see it, Linus. Let, let's watch that, Your Excellency. I think Linus. Yeah. You, uh, you, you don't bring clips that are in a biased way. You know, you select maybe uh, something that has not happened. No. Can, can you be fair and select clips across the board? What I said and has been done, and what I said and maybe has not been done. Sure. So let's watch that. Yeah. Let's, maybe you can watch that. Yeah. These people don't understand the shame they are doing to the people and the economy of Kenya. Kwa hii taxes wanaongeza usiku na mchana. Na mimi nataka niwaulize watu wa hapa Manga. Tafadhali, mkiona tumesimama hapa mbele yenu, tunawaambia kwamba tutengeneze hiyo serikali inakuja ambayo inaelewa lugha ya mwananchi wa kawaida. If you have good ideas, why do you need the police? Why do you need government? Why do you need intimidation if you have better ideas? Send them to the people of Kenya. There are enough intelligent people in Kenya to differentiate what is good from what is better and what is best. We shall be why as I come to Tatumia and sign to this who is a rich or human idea. It is a fun what we are going to vote in the years. And why is that? I I agree with that. It is it is not fair to use the police to harass citizens who have a contrary opinion. And, and, and that is perfect. That's what they're I, accusing I still, you of I still believe now. that. That's what they're but, accusing but, you but, of so, now. But, but you, you don't tell me Alfred that... Alfred Keter. Uh, 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 what, what is the problem with Alfred Keter? Yeah. 
Is that contrary tell, opinion? No, it's not a contrary opinion. I mean, the police have said why they arrested him. It is not because of me. I didn't give any instructions. I didn't even know what, what was going on. Let me tell you, uh, Linus, I am a very clear-minded person on what I say. When it is the police, I have said many of the people who opposed me, many of the people who uh, were very scared about what I would do when I become president, even the, the people who did worse things against me, I have never gone after them because I don't believe in settling political scores using the power of state or using the police. Let me also say the following. When I talked about uh, uh, the taxes that, that uh, I was... I in was the campaign trail, yes. I, I, was, I was addressing in, in the campaign trail. It was very obvious that when, at that time, we were in subsidies. That did not make sense. It is because I removed the subsidies and I changed and put production support. That is why today the price of unga has come down from 240 to 100 because I changed the model. I changed the, the configuration and it is giving us results. But are you aware, Mr. President, that the thing perhaps apart from now the police brutality that people associate you the most is the issue of taxes. I'm sure you know the name they call you. You've actually <laughs> talked about it even yourself. This you know, guy that uh, they want to come down. Let me, let me tell you, um, uh, my good brother, Ageo. Uh, okay, Ageo. When I came into office and I assessed the situation and it was no longer possible for us to borrow money, 